Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Kama Speaks. I'm really excited because this is my first show and I think about almost two months now, and I never go this long, so I'm really excited about bringing Kama Speaks back. I'm really excited about my guest. I'm thrilled because he is a young man that is out pursuing his passion, and anybody that knows me, you know that I am about pursuing your passion and not going after others. I want to welcome to my show my guest, Justin G. LaRoque. Thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, Kama. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. This is one of my first real Google Hangouts, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this tonight. Well, this is going to be fun. I, I love these. This is going to be a chance for us just to talk. For those that have not have not tuned in before the Kama Speaks, this is just a place where we just talk. We talk about his passion, what it is he's doing, where he's going, and I do this so that I can find out more about great entrepreneurs such as Justin. And before I give him the floor, I'm going to go ahead and read his bio, just a little bit about him. Justin LaRoque is a young entrepreneur and dedicated family man. Being in his 20s, he was concerned for his future and unsure where his career was going to take him. Justin found his answers in motivational books and inspirational stories, which very similar to me, that's how I am where I am today. In, this, in these, he discovered a higher way of thinking, which drove him to focus on personal development and self-improvement. Excuse me, the lifestyle change allowed Justin to achieve things he never believed to be possible and became an inspiration himself. Since he has committed his life to helping others, he proves that providing powerful motivational and inspiration, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got something in my throat, <laughs> sorry, he, he proves that pro providing powerful motivation and inspiration can allow anyone to achieve greatness and do something amazing. Justin LaRoque has improved his life and can help you change your life forever. So again, thank you so much, Justin. I'm going to give you the floor. Let everybody know a little bit more about how you got started. Thank you so much, Kama. I am, again, I'm excited to be here. First of all, I want to thank you for having me as a guest. I really do appreciate this. Sure. I, I, Got into, I wanted to get into the music industry is one of my main goals in life. Growing up, I always liked to write music and be on the engineering side and recording and working in studios was always kind of a dream for me. And one day I decided that I think it's time for me to go to audio school and see what it's all about and really learn the ins and outs. And so I, I did that. I went to an audio school in Manhattan. It was a nine and a half month program. Graduated with a 4.0 GPA. I worked really hard at it. I was excited, and you know, I just knew it was going. To, something great was going to happen. And so I got a, I got my resume together. I started sending it out to over 90 different places in my area in New York City. And out of the 90, I got three phone calls back. Wow. And I was devastated. I was upset because I, I, I mean, it's a 4.0. I, I worked really hard, and I just thought that 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 was going to be the thing to really launch me. And I realized that day that education isn't enough all the time. It's not, it won't, you know, it's not just that. It's a lot more. And I wasn't taking enough action. Uh, and then I got into the situation where I just, I had bills I had to pay. I had student loans and I wasn't working, so I needed income. So I went back to a job that I didn't like. It was an old job. It didn't have much to do with the music industry. And I, the scary thing is that I got comfortable at it. I thought I was only going to be there for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and those weeks turned into months and the months turned into years and I was blown away. didn't even realize that I was just comfortable with, you know, I had Friday nights off so I could go out and party with my friends and mm -hmm. I was getting a weekly paycheck so I was able to pay off bills and still be able to have a little extra to, you know, buy the new cool video game out or whatever it was hot at the time. And, you know, my priorities just weren't there, and I was, I was comfortable. And I feel like that's one of the most dangerous things in this world is being too comfortable. People don't realize, and they're afraid to take risks, but I feel that it's risky to not take risks because right. you fall onto this platform of not going anywhere or just not, not doing what you love doing. And that's really my main message to people is that, you got to do what you love. It's it's 
that's real living. You know, we, we're not here on this earth just to pay bills. Right. And so for me, it was something that I had to really wake up and discover for myself. And, you know, it's actually the way that it happened was a, a friend of mine I, I was introduced to. I went down to his house and I found out that this guy was, he was a year younger than me. I was 24 at the time. This is only yeah, a couple of years ago. And I was 24, he's a year younger than me. And I find out that he has his own business, he owns his own car, and he owns his own house. And I was just, I was a little, I don't know, I don't know how I felt. My, my fiance kept talking highly of him, saying, hey, Justin, I think you'll really like him and he'll motivate you a little bit. And I kind of got jealous, I think, and was like, I don't need no, you know, I'm, I'm fine on my own. What's wrong with that, you know? So... I, we went and visited this guy, and of course, we we see he has this beautiful car, a brand new Hummer. I didn't even know people drove Hummers still. Uh, he had this amazing house, and I go inside, and we start doing a tour of the house. It's beautiful. We walk down to the basement, and I see that he has a theater set up downstairs with four, two rows of four reclining chairs, uh -huh. with a theater in the front, a bar in the back, and an air hockey table on the side. And the only thing I could say about it was, oh, I see you, you got an air hockey table. That's that's cool. I like pool more, but, you know, <laughs> air hockey's cool. And he, and he says, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the pool table's upstairs. I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, my, of course it's upstairs. I, you know, and it, it blew me away, these things. And he was showing me all these these extra guest rooms. And I told him, man, this guest room is beautiful. This For a guest room, this is a big guest room. He says, oh, I'm sorry, Justin, this, this is actually just a closet. We just use this for, for a closet. Oh, wow. And I was like, no way, you know. So I didn't, you know, that this was all shocking to me, him being so young. And I just kept thinking, well, maybe he has rich parents. Maybe he was given, this was given to him, or he's super smart and he got scholarships. I was trying to make all these excuses to make myself feel better. And when I finally got to talk to him about it, I discovered that he didn't come from a rich family. He worked really hard to get to where he is. And he didn't even go to college because he, he said he was a C student. And I asked him, I was like, how, how, did you, how did you learn business? You're running your own business. Your parents didn't give it to you. You didn't go to college for it. So what, how did you learn this? And he said, well, if you want to learn something, Justin, you want to learn business, I can give you 100 books on business. And he's like, you just got to have the discipline to read and follow through. And I'm like, he, I, didn't, I just didn't type, you know, grasp me, uh, grab me. And, and he, he said that he also liked to read motivational books and uh, biographies of successful people and I told him I just didn't. I thought it was a waste of money. People scamming you. Why would you? Why would I ever want to read like a Donald Trump book? I can't see something like that helping me. And he asked who who was big in my industry. I told him that I don't know. Dr. Dre I, was one of the first names that came out of my mind. Just all the things that he's done as a as a hip hop engineer, producer, owns his own headphones and everything. Right. He said, "Okay, if Dr. Dre comes out with an out uh, with a book, you're going to read it, right?" And I laughed. I said, "No, no." Probably not. I don't know. I don't see how that can help me. And and there's one thing that he said to me that said, he said, Justin, let me put it this way. If, if you told me right now, we were in New Jersey. He said, if you told me to drive to your house in New York, but you didn't give me your address, you didn't give me a map, and you didn't give me any directions on how to get to your house. He's like, Justin, I may never get to your house. However, if you do give me your address, you do give me a map, and you do give me direct, exact directions on how you get to your house, I guarantee that not only will I get to your house, but I'll probably get to your house faster than you got to your house. Wow. And that, that hit me. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a good point, you know? So I kind of opened up to him, and, you know, one other thing that just really stood out, he was hitting me with things, you know, just really opened my mind, but he asked me, if I would rather live my dream or if I would rather live someone else's dream? Mm -hmm. And, comma, I thought I knew the answer to that. I, with confidence, said I absolutely would never put someone else's dream before my own. I'm going to live my dream, do what I want to do on my terms. That's, that's it. And he said, oh, that's great. I'm glad that we're on the same page. So what is it that you do for a living? And... <laughs> Obliviously, I was just like, "Oh, I work. I work at a at a place here. I don't, you know, not a job I don't really like right now, but that's what I do." And he said, "Yeah, see, right now you're helping someone else live their dream." Wow. That that was it. That whatever it whatever it was that triggered inside of me 
this fire, this determination where I, I'm like, that. this is it. Now, I'm from here on now, I decided that I'm going to do whatever it takes to get into the music industry. Yes. And I started trying out the books, reading the motivational books, reading self-help, started reading books on my craft, getting better at it. And the idea, of, like uh, what Steve Martin said, is to just be so good that they can't ignore you. Hmm. And I just, I took that quote as like a, it's so true. If you think about it, if you're just outstanding at what you do, people can't ignore you. Uh, ignore you. They can't look away. It's just you're too good. You're so good at it. And so I, I, I worked really hard. And in one week, from the day I met my friend, in one week, I went knocking on doors in an, unf in an unfamiliar area, and I got two internships in one week in the music industry. Wow. And to me, this was my proof. That was it. I said, this works. The work ethic, the making the sacrifices I had to make, I went home. I, my head was in a book. I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't going out with my friends. People were calling me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but I... I, I'm, I got something I need to do, and it has, and my life depends on it, you know. Right. So that that was my main drive. So a week into it, two internships, and it just took off. And now from there, I now everything I've done now, I, I travel the world. I, I've met artists and producers and engineers that I never thought I'd meet or work with in my life. And it's just been so life-changing. And to see it happen so quickly that I can't help but – want to share this with other people that are going to school now. I, I really enjoy talking to college students and, and high school students and even younger. And just to point out that I'm not trying to brag to people, but these things can happen if you really, really want them and you're really willing to put in the work that others aren't willing to do. Yeah. And anything can happen. Anything's possible. And a lot of people... I feel fall into that same trap where they they settle. They settle for much less than they are capable of and they never get out of it. And the next thing you know, you have family, you have kids, you have house, you have bills, and then you really feel like there's just this mountain on top of you that you can't dig yourself out of. You yes. know, and it's 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 tough. And and even that I believe you can come back from. It's just I try to I'd like to try to catch the young people because me being at my age, I wish five years ago that I knew the stuff I know now yes. that I knew Les Brown and Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar and all these motivational speakers and authors and they're life changing. And yes. it's, and so now I'm, even though I'm an audio guy, I, I decided that I want to speak. I have a voice. I have a story. People need to hear it. And I want to change lives and help whoever I can to encourage them to become the next Steve Jobs or Warren Buffett or, or whatever. And well, I believe know, that. I believe that we all are capable. And, and you, just, just listening to your story and how powerful it is, I, I, it just lightens up my heart because you are young. People feel like, well, I have to be in my 30s or my late 30s or my 40s before I would even think this way or achieve this goal. And it's not even about that. It just takes that aha moment like you had with the motivational books, even just seeing in person by going to the, the, the guy's house and realize like, oh my gosh. And for him just to say what he said, I was trying to see where exactly you were going with that. And it is, it's true. You're following somebody. If they give you the roadmap, then we have to take it. I'm not a big reader. I wasn't, but I'm reading now. I, I, I wasn't big into certain things like motivational speaking and inspirational type things, but I am now because that's the role that I want to take and that's the path I want to take and I see that you're taking it and you definitely have power to speak to a group of people that right now are doing their own thing in the sense of, well, I'm just going to go over here and make $5 an hour, $9 an hour, whatever minimum wage is just to get by and you don't have to get by. And that's what I love about what you're talking about right now. Uh, you said a quote, and if you can repeat it for me, you said, what, what did you say that uh, Steve, um, the actor, Steve Martin, uh, Martin Steve said? Martin, he's, he said, be so good that, you can't, that they can't ignore you. Be so good that they cannot ignore you. And the reason why I love that is because growing up personally, as I was growing up, there were certain positions I wanted to be in. And it just seems like no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't noticed. 
And it took me back a little bit because I said, wow, why is, why, why is nobody noticing my skills? But it took a while because I had to fine tune, tune things. But one thing I did was I kept going. I did not give up. And that's something to me that's very important that people need to understand in entrepreneurship. You can't give up. You know, you got to keep going. You got to keep pushing. And that's something you did. And now you're doing some, you're, you're doing and living out your dream and you're also helping other people do the same thing that are in that's in your your age range so let me ask this question after me going to rambling 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 you got me excited oh, it's <laughs> what, great it's great what's something that you would tell a young person I have a, a, a 17 year old son who's about to graduate this year from high school he wants to get into business he's already already his own little entrepreneur what is something that you would tell him if he was to come to you today just to say you know what it's hard out there I just I just want to go and just work for a company. I don't want to just name a company, but I'll just go work for them because I just don't feel like I can make it. What are some encouraging words that you would tell him to to, to keep him motivated? The first thing I would suggest is that you have to find your passion. You have to find what it is that just turns you on the minute you wake up and you think to yourself, yes, I get to go to work. I get to do this today. In fact, I'll go in early. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go in early because I, I, have, I have plans. I know what I want to get done when I get there. And, you know, maybe I, I work so much at it that maybe I forget to take lunch because I'm just so wrapped up in it and it's just so exciting. And then maybe towards the end of the night I lose track of time and, you know, it's past 5 o'clock and I don't, I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not counting down the clock. I think that's when when you can answer that for yourself on just what it is that you love to do. The passion is just going to push you. It's just mm -hmm. going to drive you to where it's not about the money. It's mm -hmm. not about it's just about the idea that you're doing what you love and yes. for me speaking helping people and then having someone come up to me and say Justin you know you've you changed my life something you said today it triggered something it mm -hmm. makes me want to do something different hearing something like that is all the difference and makes all the difference in the world to me mm -hmm. and I believe that things like this can happen by speaking because of, the, of my story because of some guy that just came by and said, hey, would you rather live your dream or would you rather live someone else's? The idea that that, that phrase switched something inside me, I know that it's possible. If it happened to me, it's possible for anyone else. That When someone just says the right word or the right <laughs> sentence to trigger them, it, that's all they need. And so that's why I like to speak. I want to help and, and really reach out to people. So I would suggest that passion's got to be one of the number one things to just find out, first of all, what it is that you love to do. The, one reason that they get trapped is because they, they dive in to something that maybe someone else suggested. There's a lot of us that deal with people telling us, don't go into this, there's no money in this. Well, I've tried that, don't bother doing that. Or you know, move, move, try this, try, try, try this field. Uh, there's more money here or whatever. It's, 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 we get directed by a lot of people in our lives and we never end up following our heart. And so we get, we fall into this where we get stuck doing something that we don't like, or we go into school, we invest all this money and we end up wanting to try to turn around and yet we're buried with debt and that's where the challenges come and a lot of people want to give up and going back to what you said you literally you, you can't give up yeah and and what well what are some oppositions that you face uh, because I'm sure like most entrepreneurs I've, I've spoken what spoken to it's always someone telling you that's not for you or you just can't can't make it what are some of the oppositions that that's come your way that you've been able to fight through to help other people 
especially your age or, or even younger, that, that's very impressionable and that will listen to it. So what, what, what's something, maybe you can give us one or two examples of some things that people may have said, but you said, no, I'm going to keep going. There was some people that I know that I used to be acquaintances to that I that said some things that teased me and said, oh, Justin's trying to become a Tony Robbins and started jokingly calling me Tony Robbins, trying to be in a, I guess, in a bullying kind of way. And I remember at first, like, I really took it to heart. And I had to really, re I mean, I, I was like, am I, am I, am, I mean, can, can I, can I be a speaker? And it maybe is he right that this is really just a silly dream? Is he real? Is he right? Maybe this is not. I don't know uh, something that I can do. I it put doubt in my in my head. Oh yeah. And then I I had to realize I had to remember that he was one person, and I had so many more friends, family, acquaintances, people I worked with and knew and grew up with that were there supporting me, telling me that I can. And I'm over here focusing on the one guy who's teasing me and putting me down. And I had to reassess and just think for myself and say, okay, you know, I, I, I can do this. This is, this is something I can do. And actually, it reminded me of something. <laughs> it's funny when we think about something like going on to Amazon.com and shopping. Mm -hmm. And you know you might find some new television or something that you're purchasing, and you go to read the reviews, and you see all these great reviews, and then you see one or two negative reviews, and you're like, oh, no, I forget that. Never mind. I can't buy that one. This guy says that this thing's wrong with it. So clearly, you know, it shows how powerful a negative thought can be on the human brain. Because I, I, it's scary to think, but the negativity is so much more stronger at first when you hear it or read it. And so when you have all these positive things in you know, shopping and you see the one negative, it, it really turns you off for a second. And, I, and even that, I had things like that. I have to catch myself and realize, you know, okay, let me focus on the good. Let me focus on what I have. Let me focus on what I know and what I'm certain of. And what I'm certain of is people have to hear my story. Because yeah. I've had people in the past tell me, you changed my life. Wow. And so if I could do one, who, who, there's people out there waiting for me. So yes. I can't stop all because of one person kind of teasing me about it, you know. But it did. It did. Doubt, doubt was a powerful thing that really hit me at first. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure people are going through that. And, you know, that's something. Even Les Brown says that, you know, the, opinion, the opinions of others is none of your business. Or the opinions people think of you are none of your business. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's you got to think of it like that. Yeah, I, I love that quote. I, I tell my kids that all the time. As a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody this weekend, a friend of mine on Sunday, and she's going through some things, and I told her, I said, Les Brown says this. He says, somebody else's opinion of you is none of your business. And when I heard him say that, I mean, I just like, oh, my gosh, it was another one of those moments that changed my life because I can't worry about what other people said. And then as you were talking, I was writing, I usually get my pen and paper, uh, about people saying something negative. One, one negative review seems like it, it can, it can ruin a person. One negative, one negative statement can ruin some, someone. And one thing that Les Brown said was that it takes about 17 positive, 17 times for, for you to hear something, 17 times positive for it to really be drilled into you, which to me is a sad thing, but it's so true. We have to hear from all these different people or say it to ourselves all these times, but as soon as somebody tells us we're not good enough, we take that to heart. Imagine what happens if we t if somebody says, you know what, you are awesome, you're great, you're going to make it, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and we took that to heart. Most of us would be so much further, and that will include myself, because when that doubt seeps in, I tell you, it just, especially when you're, you're in a bad mood, it can take everything out of you. 
everything yes. out of you. So you're 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 absolutely right. The advice that you just gave was was awesome. Um, I want to get into another question. Time is moving so fast. My goodness, I, I want to talk about your mentor. Reuben West. I, I had the pleasure to interview him a little over a year ago and I think that particular interview I just gave him the floor because he is just awesome. He, 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 he's very motivating and he's so clear in his speaking and that's what I always look for. I don't want somebody talking to me over my head. I just need to know the facts and, and, and just be inspired and be motivated. How did you get, get started with the Black Belt Speakers? Well, yeah, honestly, it was it was Les Brown that kind of, in a way, connected Ruben and I because I went to a, a training with Les, and that was one of the first times I ever met Les Brown. And that was back in November, and it was a you know a two day event that I went to, and it was it was life changing. It really was powerful, and so afterwards. I decided that, you know, maybe I should give this a shot where I check out Les Brown's Motivational Monday calls. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never tried them before. I, I knew he had them, but I just, I never tried any calls, any conference calls. So I I went on and I hear a voice. It's a woman, Stacey N.C. Grant. Mm -hmm. She's talking as, as the host and she says, tonight we have a guest speaker. Les Brown couldn't make us, make it with us tonight. And the first thing I'm thinking in my head is, well, I'm I'm here for less. I, right. I want to hear. I want to hear what Les says. I, who who are they going to put on here to replace Les Brown? You know, right. and I didn't know they did guest speaker. You know, I just always thought it was Les every time. But I understand he's a busy man, so it's one of his platinum speakers, and they you know it happens to be Reuben West. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I'm thinking is just like Reuben West. Who's who's this Reuben West? How I comma I almost hung up the phone <laughs> because <laughs> I just. I was like, I, I could go, let me go YouTube some Les Brown right now or something, you know? And I was like, what, what, what is this man, what is this man going to say? What is, what can Ruben say to really hit me? Uh, right. You know, I, I, I feel like I've heard everything, but I can tell you I was completely wrong because, and I decided to stay on. I said, I'd give Ruben five minutes, see what he can do to grab me. And he, he brought the heat. Ruben brought the heat and it hit me hard. So I was, next thing I know, I have a pen and, and paper in my hand. And I'm writing down every single word that Ruben's saying. So I was like, wow, Ruben, he's, he's, he's got something good going on. And they had a QA and a and they're sharing back and forth about, uh, or he's, he gave out his email. So I reached out to him via email. I was like, oh, that's a great connection just to say hello at least. I'll tell him I met Les. Maybe that'll get his attention, you know. And uh, I bought his book. I purchased his book, and he reached. He actually re he wrote back in an email and said, "I'd like to talk to you, get to know you." And so he, he called me the next day, and Ruben and I talked on the phone for at least an hour, as as he I got to tell him more about what I do with audio and things like that. And he said he you know he was looking for someone who could maybe help him out with some work, and I just showed him some things and. You know, he, then he introduced me to the idea of maybe joining his his speaker team, and so I I decided to take the leap and go forward with it. And ever since then, it's been life changing. He and this wow. week we were just together this weekend, and it was it literally changed my life. I'm a different person. It's it's great. Wow. You you know I, again we 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 have similar stories. I actually mm -hmm. met Les Brown. Um, I want to say about three, four years ago, maybe about three years, three, four years ago, through one, another one of his Platinums, which was Dwight Pledger. And I work with Dwight in the real estate, I sell real estate, so in the real estate um, field, I met Dwight, he was doing this thing called Total Speakers Workshop. He was like, oh, Les Brown is going to be there. And I'm like, okay. I don't know who Les Brown is, so what is that going to do for me? So I was like, okay, that's fine, but I, I want to go because I'm very interested. I speak, I do seminars, I do different things. I went to the event, and I remember I had to do an open house that day. And Dwight said, I went, it, it's Friday and Saturday, so I went, and Dwight said, make sure you're here. Just come out Saturday morning. I'm like, Dwight, I got to go to L.A. L.A. is an hour. I got to get set up for my, my open house. I want to make sure I'm there early. And... He said, just come, just come and listen to Les Brown. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss him. I went in and listened to Les Brown, and I remember sitting up in my seat, and I'm just like, 
fascinated. I'm just here like, who is this guy? Because I need to know him. <laughs> I need to be on the stage with him. I need to meet him. I, I, I just was like, okay, forget my open house. It's just going to have to be pushed back just a little further. I was so intrigued by this man. And he was telling his story about where he grew up and, and about his mom and, and where he is today. And I was just taken back. And also who was there was Andy Henriquez, who has also been on my show as well. I was able to meet them, met Les Brown, shook his hand, and I said, I want to be where you're at. I gave him my number, he gave me his number, and I never called him, never called him. Even to this day, I still hadn't called him. But after that, I was blessed with a ton of his, his, his information. I was going through like a depression and going through some things. Very long story short, he was one of the people that helped me through his motivational tapes, get myself together, get myself up, and that's why I'm here now with the show originally it was called pursuing your passion because that's what he talks about pursuing your passion and he is just phenomenal and I just met him again or I, I went to something he was at back in January um, that Dwight bought him brought him out here for and one thing he said was he trains millionaires and that's what he does and I'm just looking at the powerhouses that come out of got come from him which Ruben West is one of them, and to see what he's doing and producing people such as yourself and a couple of more people that I know of, um, it's just awesome. And you guys are in for a great journey. Because of Ruben West, I met my life coach, James Johnson, who is awesome. I've been working with him every week for a year, and he's helped build me to where I am, and he's he's building me even even better because of all of his knowledge but I love the connection that that we both have you know through Les Brown Les Brown has introduced us to where we're at Ruben West has introduced us it's such a small world in this and I know yeah. that one day we'll definitely be meeting face to face Absolutely. so I, I, yeah I, I'm really excited um, about this I'm really excited about what you're doing definitely going to be supporting your efforts before we close down what I would like for you to do I'm going to give you you know a minute or two to kind of leave something with the audience and after you do that give us your contact information how people can get in contact with you if you are open for speaking engagements whatever information that you want to give please please make sure you leave, leave that with the audience yes uh you know, one thing that I feel is also really important and something to your son maybe that he can hear too is, is that I believe you have to really be able to recognize opportunity. Recognize when it's around you because there it's always around if you can find it. And the one story that I just think of is, is when I went to a, the, the Les Brown training back in November, and it was a two-day event, and at the end of the first day, they said, be ready because tomorrow you're going to speak in front of Les Brown and his team, and you're going to be able to deliver a two-minute speech of your story for him to give you feedback on, real feedback. And the only thing I, I thought about at first was two minutes. Come on, we just talked for 30, and... I'm right. like, my story goes for at least 40 if I really wanted to stretch it. Um, how can I get that down to two minutes? So I go home that night, and I talk to my fiance, and she helped me out with it. And she's like, oh, that's easy, two minutes. We could cut every, we could cut a lot of things. I'm like, what? What are we going to cut? We, there's all these things. And so she helped me out, and you know, I applied my work ethic and started really working on it just that night and all the way through for until uh, 1 in the morning. Then I went back at like 8 in the morning down to Brooklyn. And I met up with them, and I just noticed that some of the other speakers were still having difficulty, and they were writing notes down on their hands. They, they had index, index cards. And for me, I just I recognized the opportunity that we weren't just there to learn. But he was giving us an opportunity to blow him out of the water. And I had to take that opportunity. I, I told myself that I'm going to show less that he's got something powerful in front of him as far as speakers go. I'm going to wow. show him I've got him. And it worked out where I went and I spoke. And I, I'll be honest, I know we're trying on time. We, I, we, we had two tables set up. We had two tables set up, and one was Les was sitting at one, and his wife, Dr. Julie, was sitting at the other. And they separated us into two. It was only 17 people. 
at this day two event. 17, it was so personal. And they put us into two groups of people at the tables. And I ended up sitting at the table with Dr. Julie. And we didn't know what was going on. He's, and then Les was like, okay, so one person from each table is going to stand up and share their story with their table. And then their coach at their table is going to give them the feedback. And I thought, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. I'm not sitting at Les Brown's table. <laughs> I'm not. I got, I, I, I'm thinking in my head, like, you don't understand. I have, to, I have to talk to him. He has to hear my story. He has to. I was up all night. <laughs> and and no offense to Dr. Julie, she's great. I just I was like I, I, Les, it's Les Brown, you know. So right. I'm and I was a I was about to be that guy to stand up and say, excuse me, excuse me, I got to go to the other table. But I didn't. I kept I kept quiet, and I I realized there were 17 of us, and I counted the number of people at the other table. There were eight people at that table, and there were nine at my table. And I thought if I could just go last, maybe I'd be the only one left, and Les would say, oh. Justin, maybe you can do it in front of the class for everybody since you're the last one. Comma, that happened. Wow. I ended up being the last one to go. And so I, I got up and Les said that. He said, Justin, why don't you take the mic and do it in front of everybody since you're the last one to go. And I went up there, did my two minutes, and I, I blew it out of the water. And at wow. the end of it, you know, Les pulled me aside and he, just, he said, well, and they loved it. Everybody, they were clapping. Dr. Julie said, I was hanging on your every word. wanted to hear everything you said. And uh, Les pulled me aside at the end and said, listen, Justin, I don't know where you're going to go from here or who, who you choose to coach you or wh where you decide to go, but you've got to do this. This wow. is – people have got to hear your story. And so that – I, I just want to leave people with the idea that when you recognize the opportunity – you got to step through it. You've got to take take it when you can. And yeah. again, a lot of people are there and they're kind of blinded by the idea of, oh, I'm just here to learn or I'm just here to, you know, but there's something way bigger involved. And that for me, you know, that was, that was something else that changed my life. It really did. That was awesome. That, that at least you had that opportunity. That's what you, we have to, we have to recognize opportunity and we need to definitely take it. That was awesome. Yes. Okay, why don't you um, give us your contact information, how we can follow you on social media, how do we get in yes. contact with Justin? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Facebook. So uh, if you go to facebook.com slash JG uh, that's last name is L-A-R-O-C-Q-U-E, and I, I know I'll be posting that later, and it's on your site as well, uh, facebook.com slash JG LaRoque. Or you can go to my site, which is www.jglaroque.com, and you can contact me on there as well. And yes, please, I'm, I'd love to connect with anybody and everybody, so I'm always just trying to reach out and talk to whoever I can. So I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on my show. That was awesome. I'm, I, I'm always excited about entrepreneurs. Next week, I have an opportunity to teach an entrepreneur course for eight weeks, and this oh, opportunity... Wow just fell in my lap like a few weeks ago literally and I tell people about writing goals write down what you want keep working for it towards it you never know when the opportunity is gonna come so I've been talking about doing an entrepreneur class myself but someone gave me the opportunity to present it at their school to some high schoolers and I am excited because I've been determined and I didn't give up and I recognize the opportunity I could have easily said, you know what I'm not prepared for it completely but I'm getting prepared as a matter of fact I already have my first couple of weeks ready I have my whole outline of my course ready so I'm really excited for it so I recognize the opportunity and I'm taking it and I'm running with it because I don't know where it's gonna where it's gonna take me for those that are watching look at this go back watch this send this 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 interview out to other people especially to our younger generation that some of them some of them may feel like there's no hope they may feel like there's nothing out there for them but you have something in you and you need to understand that our young people are very talented they have so many skills as a matter of fact I just came from a meeting from an what where a 11 year old child came to speak about this something that they're doing and he's teaching other people how to do coding on for websites 11 years old 
our young people have talent, so we need to recognize it. And Justin will be the perfect person to come out to speak. All his all his information, contact information is on his website, which you'll see it was already posted because you'll be watching this later. It's posted on, on this particular video. And as far as I go, if you're interested in being a part of the show, you can inbox me at or email me at booking at commaspeaks.com. That's booking at commaspeaks.com. I would love to have you on my show to push entrepreneurship. If you have a particular topic you want to talk about, it's called Comma Speaks. So we can talk about a little bit of everything. On Saturday, just one announcement on Saturday, April 18th, I am having my my first fundraiser for my nonprofit I'm starting for domestic violence. I was a victim for 12 years and now I am a survivor. I thank God I was able to make it out because there, there's many others that didn't. And that's why I'm doing the show today to show that no matter what, what your obstacles are, you can pursue your passion. You can go after your goals and go after your dreams. I'm having the pancake breakfast in Moreno Valley at Applebee's. Tickets are $10. I'm also taking donations. So if you're interested, you just want to donate, inbox me or email me. You can actually email me at comma at comma speaks .com if you want to donate. Follow me on social media under comma speaks. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google Plus, all under comma speaks, YouTube, comma speaks, or for sale by comma. And I think that is all for me. <laughs> Again, this has been a great show. Justin, you are awesome. You are just at the beginning of where you're going to be. I mean, I'm sorry, just, just at the beginning of where you're going, and you're going to be taking off and soaring. And I know I'll see you all over the place because your drive is there. I love your spirit. I love what it is that you're doing. And I know that you're going to be able to help so many lives. And for those that are watching, I always leave this with you. No matter what you do in life, always pursue your passion.